I do look at the at the moving average. I think that's important. Also, the underlying household survey showed much better numbers, and I think that's really important as well. There was the noise from the government shutdown. All of a sudden, all these workers that had been on part-time work because they were trying to make ends meet during the shutdown had fallen off, and more so, temporary unemployed fell off, and more so from January, which suggests the underlying trend is still very positive for the labor market. Also, really in interesting to see where the strength and participation is among minorities, particularly 25 to 35 year olds, 20, 25 to 34 year olds, mostly young women throwing their hat back in the ring and coming back in to participate in the labor force. That's very important because a lot of those are people who are also foreign born. Uh, Hispanics um, and then blacks in the United States are also seeing an increase in their participation rate. So I think the details on participation very interesting as well. On the average hourly earnings, I'm very encouraged by that, but I take it with a bit of grain of salt, as Steve mentioned because hours work fell. Also, it's also such a small sample in the actual number um, that's a little volatile. And I think it's important to note that we haven't seen the step up in earnings when low wages have picked up and the low wage jobs are seeing the biggest gains out there, which is fabulous. But we're not seeing that trickle up we once saw into management and middle income wages. And that's because some major employers have actually cut their management pay as they have raised their entry level pay. And that's something very different from a different dynamic from other expansions. So, Tom, I mean, that, that's what we're getting from a lot of the economists today, which is you can't read too much into one headline miss, especially with a lot of the other indicators looking pretty solid. How then do you explain the market reaction? Sharp sell off in stocks, the dollar, yields go lower. Well, I, what I thought was most interesting was the lack of reaction. This announcement came out, you know, pre-market. The bond market didn't move and the equity market had sold down prior to that. And if the only two numbers you had were the unemployment rate and wage growth, and then you had to guess at what the payroll number is, you wouldn't have guessed 20,000. So it wouldn't surprise me if there was a revision along the way. And the other thing I think the, that we do see in the economy, one of the strong tenets of the economy right now is the consumer. You worried at all about the global sort of growth or lack thereof scenario? I mean, we got numbers from China on obviously exports, imports, which were weak. Europe, we know, and the ECB yeah. decision certainly reflects their concern. Uh, does that come back around to us? Eventually it does. And, and I think what we've seen is Europe's been weak for a long time. I don't think that's going to change in the near term. They have some structural issues. And I think the real thing right now is if we can get something on trade with China where the trade is positive, then I think that could really be strong for the second half, especially if China um, implements their own stimulus into their economy. Diane, how does the Fed take uh, this morning's jobs number? Um, with a grain of salt, <laughs> just like the rest of us. They look at the jobs number and they say the economy, the trend is there. They're still on solid pace, not strong, but solid. Not as strong as last year, but solid. Um, and in March, they step further to the sidelines. I think you've seen that already in their speeches. We know the dot plot's going to go down. I think the Fed's going to be sidelined this entire year, and they're going to move into neutral and halt the reductions in the roll-off of their balance sheet as well. The Fed still has a lot of big decisions to make about what their toolbox is going to look like. They're talking about negative rates. If the economy were to falter, we're not there yet, thankfully. They're also talking about what should the composition of that big balance sheet be going forward. Should it be all short-term treasuries? Should it be include mortgage-backed securities? Should it include longer-term uh, treasuries? Would that be too much looking like we're monetizing our debt? All of those issues are going to come up in the next couple of weeks and in the next several months. And I don't think we're going to have a resolution soon, but we will see the Fed firmly, even more firmly, step to the sidelines and be flexible yeah. and patient in March. We are going to hear from Powell uh, late tonight and, of course, on 60 Minutes on Sunday night. Diane, you, as I recall, uh, did suggest the Fed may cut rather than hike, and that was before Powell's reset. Uh, are you still of the same mind? Uh, that was for 2020, and I still am. Yep. I still do think um, the risk of recession is high for 2020. And I'm not as optimistic that even if we get a trade deal with China, that they can stimulate. They've, the weakness preceded the trade weakness, and their ability to stimulate is not as strong as it once was. The transmission, when you jail people for taking on debt in the private sector, they don't take it on as quickly when you put it out there again.